Welcome, I am Susan Wonderly, a first grade teacher at Stony Point Elementary. This video will focus on first grade shape standards 1.G.1, 1.G.2, and 1.G.3. In first grade, students will distinguish between defining and non-defining attributes of shapes. Students will also use basic shapes that they have learned in kindergarten to compose other 2D and 3D shapes. Lastly, students will partition shapes into two and four equal parts. This sets the stage for later learning of fractions. In kindergarten, students began to identify shapes and were asked to recognize a shape even when it was turned or upside down. However, students in kindergarten may not yet know the defining attributes of a shape. They may recognize a square because it looks like a door, or a triangle because it looks like a piece of pizza. In second grade, students need to continue examining the defining attributes of shapes, including number of angles. They will also partition rectangles and circles into two, three, and four equal parts. Both second grade concepts directly build on the first grade geometry concepts. At the early stages of geometric reasoning, students may overgeneralize and think all shapes that look similar to a triangle are triangles. It is crucial that students have ample opportunities with shapes at an early age so they can progress through the levels of geometric reasoning. Opportunities must include practice naming shapes in the environment. First, students will identify the shape and recognize an object such as a door as a rectangle. Next, students will start to understand defining attributes such as two pairs of equal sides to identify a rectangle. In first grade, we look at the defining attributes of both 2D and 3D shapes. This screen shows all the shapes a first grader must see. Some of these shapes are a review from kindergarten, while others will be new to the students. For more information about the shapes first graders need to know, refer to the Cumberland County First Grade Unit Analysis or NCDPI's unpacking document. Defining attributes are those qualities that make a shape a shape. Attributes such as red, small, and pointy are not defining attributes. Defining attributes for three-dimensional shapes include qualities such as faces, edges, and vertices. A face is any flat surface of a 3D shape. This means that the surface of a sphere is not a face. An edge is a straight line where two or more faces meet. A vertex is where two or more points meet. For a complete description of the defining attributes of each shape, visit the vocabulary section at the back of the Cumberland County Unit Analysis. Students may think that a square that has been rotated is no longer a square but may say diamond. By providing students lots of opportunities to handle and manipulate shapes, this misconception will be rectified. The teacher should also be sure to frequently hold shapes upside down and turn them around so students can see them in many positions. Lastly, by focusing on the defining attributes of a shape, students can see that a square has four equal sides and four right angles even when turned. One side note, if students do tend to use the word diamond to describe a shape, be sure to model using the terms rhombus or parallelogram instead. Standard G2 has two parts. First, we compose simple shapes to make a new shape. It may be that students put two trapezoids together to make a hexagon. However, it may also be that students put two trapezoids together and make a new shape that doesn't have a familiar name. Either option is valid. The second part of this standard asks students to put together two composite shapes to make a new shape. Again, this may or may not have a familiar name to students. While this seems like a simple standard, it is so important. This helps students build an understanding of part-part relationships, builds visual spatial skills, and develops puzzle solving skills. Attribute blocks are a great tool for both sorting and composing shapes. Students need to have plenty of experiences sorting to understand how shapes are similar and different. Pattern blocks and tangrams are great tools for composing shapes. And geoboards are appropriate tools for constructing shapes as students learn their defining attributes. The final standard in this cluster, G3, asks that students partition circles and rectangles, including squares, into four and two equal shares. 
students must describe the shares using words halves, fourths, and quarters, and use the phrases half of, fourth of, or quarter of. Lastly, students should be able to describe the whole as containing two or four shares. Through hands-on experiences with this standard, students should begin to understand that partitioning a shape into more equal shares creates smaller shares. Some important notes for the teacher. This is the first time partitioning into equal shares is in the K-5 math standards. Students do not need to see fractions written as symbols until the third grade. Since the concept of equally partitioning circles and rectangles is new to students, all of the vocabulary is new as well. This means that front-loading and explicit instruction of these words is essential. Further, this vocabulary is crucial for later learning of fractions in the upper grades. Tips for the teacher. When students are asked to partition a shape, try to give a context or real-world purpose to the situation. For example, you have decided to share a cookie with a friend. How would you break this cookie into two equal shares? If students are working with paper circles, they may not actually think about whether or not the partitions are equal. Be sure to take the partitioning back to the real world situation by asking, is this a fair share? Does it matter which share you receive? If both shares are equal in size, it shouldn't matter who gets which share. And then lastly, remember that students in first grade still have difficulty drawing precisely and cutting precisely. Therefore, they may understand how to equally partition a shape, but may not accurately be able to depict this on paper. While learning partitioning, students may think the size of equal shares is related to the number of equal shares. For example, to think that fourths are larger than halves because there are four fourths in one hole and only two halves in one hole. Students need to focus on the changing size of the fractional part. By providing a variety of experiences with each equal sharing situations, students will start to recognize the difference. While showing pictures of actual objects, ask students questions such as, which share would you prefer, a fourth or a half? Provide students with a wide variety of partitioning app opportunities using varied materials including paper, geoboards, and food. Thank you for watching this video on first grade geometry standards. For more resources and activities, please visit the Cumberland County Schools Resource Guide and the Meaningful Math Tasks.